everyone. Um, as she said, my name is Christine, and I'm a digital media consultant founders. I get a Facebook, Twitter, blog all day for myself and my clients. And today I hope to share some insights. Um, there's stuff that you can Google, and Google usually tells you what, but rarely does it tell you how or who. Yeah? So hopefully I get to share those insights with you um, this morning so that you can get to know the workings behind websites, the workings behind an online presence, all right? Uh, when it comes to uh, your personnel, I actually have a background in HR, but I found myself in the tech space and I found myself at home in the same place in the, at the same time. So I'll get to that towards the end and in your questions because maybe not everyone here might be in the position where they actually have full-time staff or part-time staff yet. All right. Now, when it comes to building an online presence, you need a strategy, you need a game plan, and the game plan comes from your goals. It could be as simple as, I just want to sell. I just want to sell honey. Yeah, that's your goal. I, I want to sell, um, a hundred bottles every month. That's it. And that's good. That's good. Um, so it's important you understand what your personal or business goals are. The reason I'm talking about personal is there is a place online for the individual through blogs. It's not necessarily the case that uh, your business begins from an enterprise perspective. It can begin from an individual perspective as well. Um, what an online strategy does, it either mirrors or supports these goals. So when you open up a website or a social media handle or a YouTube channel, you know why. You know the reason why you've opened it and you're headed towards those, those goals um, through these channels. There are tools available for you to use. That is websites, blogs, newsletters, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all those are tools. Um, one thing I would urge you is not to get into the hype of you know, the gods of social media. There is no such thing. They were made by people for us to use um, in business, in our personal lives. So strategize. The thing to know about strategy is that it's an ongoing process. It's not sit down business plan, and then move. You'll most likely only have one or two variables. For example, you'll know what, honey, and you'll know uh, when. Perhaps there are specific seasons within the year where uh, production is high. But you'll never have the entire variable, the entire mix of who, what, where, when, why, how. You figure that the you figure out the, the rest along the way. So if there's anyone here who's waiting for everything to fall into place, it won't. It won't until you step in. I really like Hi uh, IHUB's moniker, so to speak. Once you get in, you'll get it. You'll understand. You'll be able to pick up. It's kind of like a game, uh, a video game, that is. You'll get to pick up the, the points along the way. Once you have your strategy in place, engage. Um, online visibility is enabled by just basically two, in two ways. One, website, this includes blogs. And two, social media. Um, and different websites have different functions. I'll focus on websites and one of my colleagues will clue you in or cue you in on the social media aspect. So jumuya.co.ke is an e-commerce website where suppliers can list their products and buyers can come and buy. That's their goal, e-commerce, to do business. Mutuamateka.co.ke is basically an online portfolio of the photographer's work. I'm sure some of you have come across his work. He literally changed the landscape of Google Images for Nairobi. Yeah? So that's where he puts his online portfolio for his friends, his fans, and his clients to see. 
So he uses that in that, in that respect. Um, please note that a blog is a type of website. And most social media platforms run as micro-blogging platforms. So whenever you're updating your status on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, you're, you're, you're logging bits of your life. It's micro-blogging. Um, one other thing I'd like to mention is that your website is home. It's your home base. And one of the key or fundamental aspects of your online presence is run your business or run your brand from home. Don't depend on social media to run your business. Don't run your entire business on Instagram. The thing is, they have their goals. And when they change house rules in a way that affects your company, um, that's a very high risk to take on, extremely high. To have your entire shop on Instagram and Instagram alone, no matter how uh, profitable, no matter how popular it is, you've taken on a high and unnecessary risk, right? So your website is your home base, and your social media um, uh, profiles, they support that. So essentially, you should be driving all the traffic to your website, whether you're a blogger or whether you're uh, an enterprise. When you engage there, you engage in two different ways. Um, the first one is design. And again, I'm focusing on websites here. And the second is content. When it comes to design, there are just a few um, key things I picked on just to share with you. And the first one is make sure your site is mobile friendly. 80% of online traffic right now is through mobiles. So if your site is not mobile friendly, that means that 80% of traffic to you is bouncing off. And that's really high. Um, this is not a very special thing that your web designer has to do or charge you extra for. This is basic bottom line stuff, OK? Um, just to kind of emphasize on that, Google is actually, in their search engine results, they give priority to mobile-friendly um, websites. So that means that you rank higher or better with Google if it's mobile-friendly. The second thing is um, search indexing readability. Basically, if you can just go back. Sorry. Yes. Um, assuming that this is the one of the landing pages on your site, and your script is embedded in the image. Google doesn't read pictures. Google reads words. So as beautiful as image is, it renders you null and void, SEO-wise. So make sure that when you're putting up your site or building your site, that the, the script is not embedded in the image, that those two are different. Yeah. Um, quick load time and just two clicks. It's been said that uh, some of the most stressful um, signs of our times are one, low battery, two, <laughs> no Wi-Fi, <laughs> and three, that loading sign. So if someone gets on your site and, why am I watching? You lose them. You lose them. Unfortunately, we have, uh, as a result of the internet, we've lost our ability to persevere, our ability to kind of be patient. And they will bounce off. Not because um, your site wasn't there, but because it, it didn't load quickly. So again, when it comes to web design, make sure that your web um, webmaster has that on point. If you ever want to know how your website is functioning, 
go in and log in on different devices yourself. Your experience will be your user's experience. Um, another basic of web design is make sure that your user can get to where they need to get to within two or three clicks, right? Don't, it wouldn't be advised for them to stay on trying to look for the content. So make sure everything is well labeled and that they can get there within two clicks, two, three clicks, where your content is of a very high quality. You don't need to worry because we, we, we essentially will stay there trying to find you know, other content. But on the basis of just the first few seconds that someone is on the site, um, within two clicks, three clicks is reasonable. Um, call to action. Make sure that there's a clear call to action. I've come to your site. What do you need me to do? We are engineered as human beings for, you know, it, it, it's a logical thought, thought process. Um, once you provide me with the information, let's say uh, you link, read more on, and it's your site. When I reach your site, what do you need me to do? So make sure that there's a very clear call to action. Do you want me to subscribe for updates, uh, shop for books, place your order today, make a donation? It's good to give your customers an incentive. Um, going back to Jumuya, they give a 500 shilling kind of promotional discount when you register onto their site. So give your clients an incentive. Um, I'm a fan of making use of the page tabs. Uh, instead of having a call to action maybe on the page, I actually take a tab and title it with, you know, let's say shop for books, yeah. Another, another way to make you good friends with Google is to make frequent site updates. Um, one of the most unfortunate things is to have a website up and it remains static. That means that you know you have a site, it's up, it's been designed, but you haven't updated it for three years. It's just there, which is unfortunate. Um, use your, remember we said that it's your home base, it's, it's, your, it's your foundation. So have a, you can add a blog, you can send newsletters via email, just something to keep it current. You can also post your newsletters on the site. You can, um, Put in a gallery, where have you been? Maybe you've been doing a couple of activations around the city. Um, maybe what you're up to in the office. There's a very wide variety of content that you can provide. So make use of that. And what happens is that Google then prioritizes your site on the basis of relevance. Um, it's good to use the genuine images as opposed to generic images. The great thing about online is that it doesn't have to be perfect. It's present over perfect, right? And you can work on it. You can go from uh, stock photos to uh, photo shoot. There are very many. When, when I started online, um, I, I remember going around the passport photo. They, they had digital cameras. I didn't have one at the time. And the concept of just take a photo of the, 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 the item for me and give me the digital format it was too much. It was too much for them. And this was just a couple of years ago, right? But right now you have the ability to go to any photographer and they'll understand. You won't have to go around in circles trying to explain why you need digital images of anything. So that's your way to help you stay relevant and attract your customers, which brings me to content. Um, this I am passionate about. I've, I've built my entire business around two key platforms, and that's blogs and YouTube. That is written content and video. And when I say find your tribe, I mean find your tribe. This is that group of people who understand you. You don't need to explain, they get it. 
they get it. If you're, someone talked about baking cakes, but healthy. They get it. They get it. Yes, I want sorghum. I want millet in the mix. Um, so when you find this group of people, they're mixed. They all look like flamingos, right? But you, <laughs> you have flamingos that like cake. You have flamingos that love IT. You have flamingos that love makeup. So your work is through your content to find your tribe. Unfortunately, what we have online is people are speaking a different language from their tribe. Because that's the, the key thing. Makeup people speak a certain language. To some, this is a pencil case. To others, this is a makeup bag. And to others, well, it's a selfie preparation kit. Yeah. That's what I mean by language. Anyone who understands one Instagram or makeup will automatically be attracted to such, in terms of real and actual content. They understand the language that you're speaking. They understand that, you know, buffing is not buffing a car, it's buffing on your makeup, <laughs> right? Um, to some, it's a, a hashtag is not a hashtag. If you ask Olivia, a hashtag is a sharp in music language, okay? So um, if I was to highly recommend one thing is stay true to what it is that you're doing and who it is that you are because your language will attract your tribe. Uh, if you go online and you speak millennial, millennial is, um, for example, I, I once saw, um, it was a company, a brand, a Kenyan brand that sells makeup and the language was very millennial, yet their makeup is good, their products are good. Um, something about buffing being very cardio. And what that does is their audience, which is most likely more mature, passes because they haven't spoken their language. Yes, I want makeup, but you haven't spoken it in a way that I, I can understand. And what happens is that you attract a younger generation who may not be able to afford your makeup yet because the price tag is a bit higher. So you're literally at cross purposes online. So unfortunately, on social media, everyone is trying to speak millennial. What you should instead be doing is trying to speak your tribe's language, whatever it is. And so it should stem from your passion so that it doesn't, it's not forced. Uh, on websites, the unfortunate thing is that everyone is trying to speak corporate or business. Why are you talking about shareholders? Why? Keep true to your core, um, the, your core clientele, whoever they are. And please remember, shareholders have their place, and they are also your clients. So as long as you stay core to who you are, um, there won't be a problem. But when you try to speak how you think others want you to speak, you'll be at cross purposes. And this is where now issues of finding someone to write articles for you comes in, and social media isn't working for me, my site is just there. It's, it's a complete mess because you've messed with your language, right? Now that you know the much that I was able to share for you, go do. Thank you. <laughs>